Hey everyone, Maya here from My Storybook, and this week's featured read aloud is The Love Letter, written by Annika Aldemoy Denise and illustrated by Lucy Ruth Cummins. And if you remember Lucy Ruth Cummins, she was the author and illustrator of Stumpkin, the book about the pumpkin without a stem. Now friends, before we start this week's featured read aloud, there is something exciting that I want to share with you that I have just started. Are you ready? My Storybook is now offering one-on-one -on -one read aloud video sessions where you are able to sign up for a time slot for a 30 minute read aloud live video chat with me. The way it works is you get to choose a book from a list of books that you can find on a list down below and every two months there's a new list of books that comes out for the next two months of read aloud video sessions. And once we book our read aloud session, you and I will get on video chat through Zoom. I'll send you an invite and you and I will read a story aloud together. And it'll be just like on here where I'll be asking questions and pointing out themes and main ideas and vocabulary throughout the book, except we'll actually be able to have a real conversation because I'll be able to hear what you say and it's like we'll get to talk about the book in real life, in real time. So I'll get to chat with you and you'll get to chat with me all about our reading adventures. So these read aloud video sessions are great for just going on reading adventures together if you love talking about books, if you want to talk to me about books, or even if maybe you're learning or practicing English, it's a great way to start talking and practicing and hearing some words and also getting to practice speaking the language. It's also great if you're learning about how to understand a book and talk about a book and really get into what the book is about. So if you are interested in booking some sessions with me, please check out that link below where it says one-on-one -on -one video sessions with my storybook and you can go ahead and sign up for a slot before they are all taken up. All right, well I hope I get to meet and read with some of you in real life through the video chat. I can't wait to meet and chat with all of you. Well, I hope to be able to schedule a reading adventure with you soon. But for now, back to our story of the week. Now Valentine's Day is coming up. It's a holiday where we celebrate love and friendship and how we show our love to others around us. And I know one way that we do it on Valentine's Day is sometimes to write Valentines or to write love letters to people we care about. So in this little story, there's going to be a love letter that's passed around to some friends who all think that the love letter is for them. But we're going to see who is it really for. But something important that you'll notice is that when you share love and kindness, it kind of has a snowball effect. And what I mean by snowball effect is that means that if you do one action of love, it kind of leads to more and more actions of love. It kind of starts rolling like a snowball and it gets bigger and bigger just like a snowball gets more and more snow as it starts to roll. So all it takes is one act of love, one person showing love, and it can lead to a whole bunch of others also showing love. Hi my friends, before we get started, what are some ways that you show love? Or what are some ideas that you have? Beautiful. Now, I think we're ready to get started. Are you? Okay, let's begin. So this week's featured storybook is The Love Letter, written by Annika Aldemoy Denise and illustrated by Lucy Ruth Cummins. So that means that Denise wrote all the words in this story and that Lucy Ruth Cummins drew all the pictures that you are about to see. And if I take a look at this cover right here, it's a very cute cover. What do you notice? Yeah, I see a little forest animal right here. wonder what kind of animal it is. And it looks like he's holding a an envelope, right? And reading a letter. Must be the love letter. I wonder who wrote it. And what is the setting of this story? If you look at the background, where does this story take place, the setting? Yeah, it kind of looks like they're in a forest or the woods, right? And what is the weather? What season is it right now? Is it winter, summer, spring, fall? Winter, right? Because of all the snow. My friends, have you been to the snow? I actually just got back from the snow a few weeks ago. It was pretty fun. And I noticed, my friends, if you notice that the trees, they kind of come down the branches to make, what kind of shape is this? A heart, huh? Ah, uh, how lovely. Okay, well let's find out what this love letter is all about. So here's our title page. Remember our title page has the title of our book, The Love Letter, and he wrote and illustrated it. And if I take a look at this illustration, this picture, I see that the title is in the moon, right? And it's nighttime in the forest. 
Huh. Look at this. Looks like our friend from the cover of our story, huh? And what is that he's got? Is that the love letter? Let's see. Hedgehog was late. He did not like being late. Me neither. Do you like being late? It's a little embarrassing sometimes, huh? It further frazzled his already prickly mood. So frazzled. What do you think it means when he says, what do you think that means, frazzled, that he feels frazzled? Yeah, he doesn't feel too good, huh? It's kind of already making him feel a bit stranger than he already does because he's already in a prickly mood, huh? Not super happy, not super sad, or just kind of like, eh. Do you ever feel like that kind of prickly, kind of strained? So further frazzled him, made him feel a bit more prickly. He'd been grumbling about it to the ground when dot, dot, dot. So these dot, dot, dots are called ellipses, and that means that it's going to continue on the next page. This sentence, this thought, isn't done yet. So how is Hedgehog feeling right now? Yeah, we just talked about it. Not very happy, kind of grumpy, right? But then when it says when, like something's about to happen to change that, when, what does he see again? That letter. Hmm. When he spotted something unusual, so something strange. It was not an acorn mm -mm. or a leaf or any of the ordinary somethings he came across on his daily walk. Seems like he usually sees acorns and leaves because he's in the forest. It was a letter. This wasn't just any letter. And over here, my friends, I see this picture. It looks like we're going to get to read what's in this letter. Are you ready? Let's see what it says. Friend. Oh, so someone's writing it to their friend. You are a joy, a light, a secret hope, a safe good night, a face that shines just for me. What lovely words, huh? When you go, I miss you so. Don't you know I love you? <gasps> My friends, how does this person feel about their friend? They love them, right? And did you hear all those beautiful ways that they described their friend? You are a joy, a light. So how does their friend make them feel if they say you are a joy, a light? Makes them feel really happy, huh? My friends, think of someone really special that you know. Do you have someone in mind? How would you describe them? Would you say they are a joy? Or what might you say? You are a beautiful butterfly, maybe. Oh, those are beautiful words to use to describe somebody. Well, let's see. It wasn't just any letter. It was a love letter. My word, said Hedgehog. Someone loves me. And how does he feel about that? Looks kind of happy, huh? And I remember before he was kind of grumpy, but not anymore. Then he tucked the letter into his backpack and went on his way. Hmm. Looks like there's some more friends on this page. Bunny and Squirrel were already in the meadow. Squirrel was busy gathering acorns while Bunny busied herself with a nap. Hmm. Normally, Hedgehog liked to get there first. But today, he had a love letter and was feeling oddly cheerful. Huh. That makes me think that he doesn't usually feel cheerful. But why does he feel cheerful? Because he has a special letter, huh? When Bunny beat him at Leapfrog, high five. <gasps> hmm. That's a kind thing to do if you lose. When Squirrel asked to share his lunch, what do you think Hedgehog said? My pleasure. Sure, let's share. <gasps> It's another nice thing to do. And when Bunny wanted a friend to walk her home, do you think Hedgehog walked with her? Delighted, he said. He was so happy to do that. My friends, do you think he normally does all these kind things? Not really, huh? But it seems like he got this. He found this love letter. He's feeling really cheerful. And how does that make him act towards everyone else? Really kind, huh? He's doing all these nice things because someone said something nice to him. Now he's doing all these kind things. Hmm. Hedgehog is being oddly cheerful, thought Bunny. 
Huh. She wasn't in the habit of hugging Hedgehog, but today she gave him her best bunny squeeze. <gasps> Aw, so does Bunny normally give Hedgehog a hug? No, that wasn't her habit, what she usually does, but why did she give him a hug today? Because he was being so kind and cheerful, huh? So when he's kind and cheerful, makes someone else kind and cheerful too, kind of like a snowball effect. <gasps> But what happens when she squeezes him, my friends? Where's that leather? Do you see it? Ah, it fell out. Hmm. hmm. And then, what's going on here? She was just about to hop home when, when what happened? She saw a leather line on the ground. Hmm, do you think she's going to read it? Looks like she's reading it. Let's read it again, because it was such a kind, beautiful letter. Friend, you are a joy, a light, a secret hope, a safe good night, a face that shines just for me. When you go, I miss you so. Don't you know I love you? My whiskers, whispered Bunny. Ooh, she seems kind of like surprised. What a lovely letter. My whiskers, whispered Bunny. Hedgehog loves me. <gasps> Wait a minute. So, who does she think this letter is from? Hedgehog. She thinks Hedgehog wrote it for her. <gasps> is that true? Is that what happened? Did Hedgehog write it for her? No, Hedgehog had found it, huh? But Bunny thinks Hedgehog wrote it for her. How do you think that's going to make Bunny feel? Let's see. Down in the rabbit hole, Mama put her straight to work. Normally, Bunny pretended to nap at chore time. So it sounds like normally Bunny doesn't like to do her chores, but that makes it sound like something else is going to happen today. Do you think she's going to do her chores today? But today she had a love letter and she was feeling oddly helpful. So Hedgehog had felt cheerful because of the letter, and now Bunny feels helpful. This love letter is making them feel all kinds of good things, huh? When Mama said, peel parsnips, peel these vegetables. Perfect. Looks like Bunny did them perfectly. Huh, that's helpful. When Sister said, set the table. Surely, said Bunny. Oh, of course. That's also really helpful. And when Papa said, sweep the floor. That's a lot of chores. What do you think Bunny said? Splendid. Like, I'll be happy to. <gasps> Oh, so she's being so helpful because that love letter just made her feel like doing helpful things. It made her feel good. How powerful a note can be, huh? Some kind words written down. After dinner, she hopped over to Squirrel's house. I brought you some acorns, said Bunny. Bunny is being oddly helpful, thought Squirrel. Hmm, is Bunny usually helpful? Does she usually bring him acorns? She's feeling helpful today because of that letter. Before he could say, thanks a bundle, Bunny overturned her apron full of acorns onto the pile. And oh, Squirrel's neatly stacked acorns came tumbling down. Uh-oh. Oh. So Bunny tried to be helpful, but she caused a little mess, huh? Hmm. And my friends, do you see the love letter on her? Do you see where she's holding it? In her little front pocket, huh? Bunny should be less of a busy bunny, Squirrel sighed. Then he spotted something unusual among the acorn scatter. It was a, what was it? A letter. <gasps> it must have fallen out of Bunny's pocket, huh? And does he read it? Of course he reads it. Let's read it again. Such a lovely letter. Friend, you are a joy, a light, a secret hope, a safe good night, a face that shines just for me. When you go, I miss you so. Don't you know? I love you. And my friend's this is sign language for I love you. Aw, oh, nuts, said Squirrel. Bunny loves me. <gasps> Wait a minute. So who does Squirrel think wrote that letter? Bunny? He thinks Bunny wrote it for him. Is that true? No, remember, because Bunny thinks Hedgehog wrote it for Bunny, but Hedgehog just found it, right? 
Huh. How do you think this is going to make Squirrel feel? Hedgehog felt cheerful. Bunny felt helpful. What do you think about Squirrel? Hmm. Normally, messiness made Squirrel anxious. So it made him feel really worried and not too good. But today, he had a love letter and was feeling oddly carefree. So carefree means not so worried as much. Just feeling kind of happy about how things are. Not being so anxious, so worried all the time. So that love letter changed Squirrel's feelings. Just how it changed it for Bunny and Hedgehog, huh? When Mama splashed soup on his napkin, swarp! Did Squirrel care? No. It sounds like usually he cares, but today he's feeling carefree. That's okay. I'll just slurp my soup. When Papa led wood shavings on the floor, scoop! Squirrel just helped pick them up. And when Squirrel's teddy bears were not in size order, uh-oh, they were out of order. Sounds like he usually cares, but does he care today? Snore. Uh-uh. He's carefree. Feels a lot better about it. He's like, that's okay. I don't need to worry about that. Because my friends, are all these things really important? Is spilling soup or dropping some wood shavings or your stuffies out of order? Those really big things to be worried about? No, they're just little small things, so doesn't need to be worried about them and he feels so much better, huh? Huh, so on this page I see all three of the friends and I wonder where they're going. The next morning, Hedgehog, Bunny, and Squirrel bundled up and headed to the meadow. If I do not show, Bunny will miss me so, said Squirrel. Because Squirrel thinks Bunny wrote the letter for him. If I do not show, Hedgehog will miss me so, said Bunny. Because Bunny thinks Hedgehog wrote the letter for her and see what Hedgehog thinks. If I do not show, I might never know who sent me this love letter, said Hedgehog. So Hedgehog thinks maybe one of them sent him the letter. But he's not so sure, huh? Because he just found it. So they all think one of them wrote the letter, but do we know who actually wrote it? We don't. Hmm. No one said a word at first. Oh, how do you think they're feeling? Maybe a little shy. The letter that had made Hedgehog cheerful and Bunny helpful and Squirrel carefree suddenly made them all shy. Hmm, just like we said. Squirrel gathered the courage to speak first. Bunny, he said, pulling the love letter from his pocket, I may not have your gift for words, but... But then he gets cut off. He doesn't get to finish what he's saying because then Bunny says... My letter, said Bunny, snatching it up. My letter, cried Squirrel, grabbing it back. Uh-oh, wait a minute. My letter, insisted Hedgehog, stealing it away. And on it went, snatch, grab, steal, bicker, argue, until... So my friends, all of a sudden this letter that made them feel so good, now they're all arguing and fighting for it. Uh-oh, they all think it's theirs. And they're all fighting until... What do you think is going to happen? Good guess. If you take a look at this picture right here, oh, what's happening to the letter? It's ripping. Oh. Look what you've done, said Bunny. You ripped it, said Squirrel. Did not, did too, did not. They're not being very kind and loving to each other anymore, are they? Wait a minute, who's this in the corner? Excuse me. A little mouse. Where'd this character come from? Was that my letter? Asked Mouse. Wait a minute. Mouse's letter? Your letter, said Hedgehog. I'm not sure. What did it say? And here it goes. Mouse pieces it back together and it said... Friend, you are a joy, a light, a secret hope, a safe good night, a face that shines just for me. When you go, I miss you so. Don't you know? I love you in your little love and sign language. You wrote the letter, said Bunny. But who is it for? Who do you think Mouse wrote the letter for? One of them? 
The moon," said Mouse. <gasps> Wait, the moon! Remember, my friends, we saw the moon in that title page. Maybe that was a clue. So Mouse wrote that letter for the moon. Oh, maybe because the moon is a light, it shines, a safe good night. Hmm. Why does the moon need a love letter? Asked Hedgehog. Good question. Because I'm a small mouse in a dark forest, and the moon is my very good friend. Don't you have a very good friend? Said Mouse. Do they have very good friends? Hedgehog, Bunny, and Squirrel looked from one to the other. They were good friends, friends who shared their lunch and walked each other home. And gave hugs and brought acorns. Those are good friends' things to do. This was all a terrible mix-up," said Hedgehog. "The love letter never really belonged to any of us," said Bunny. "We shouldn't be arguing over something we never had," said Squirrel. Mouse looked at their long faces. So their long faces. What does that mean? How are they feeling if they have long faces? Sad, huh? It's another way to say sad. Because when you're sad, your face kind of goes <sighs> long. When you thought that letter was for you, how did you feel? She asked. Mouse asked. Cheerful, said Hedgehog. Helpful, said Bunny. Carefree, said Squirrel. So when they thought that letter was for them, they all felt these really good feelings. And asked Mouse, "How else did you feel?" Loved, they said. That letter made them feel loved. And my friends. How are they feeling now? Are they still angry with each other and sad? No, right? They feel better now, happy and loved. Well, then I'd call that a wonderful mix-up," said Mouse. So Mouse says, "So there was a little mix-up with the letter, but it was a wonderful mix-up. Everyone felt really good, and it brings them closer together because now they see all those kind things and loving things that they can do for each other and others around them, huh?" What a happy ending! Even little mouse is included in their group hug. The end. So that was the story of the love letter. And my friends, what do you think? What was your favorite part? What did you like about it? What did you maybe not like? Yeah, I thought that was really interesting, huh? How they all thought the love letter was for them from one of the other friends, huh? Bunny thought Hedgehog wrote it for her. Squirrel thought Bunny wrote it for him. But what was really interesting to me was that this love letter, when they read it, it made them feel a lot better, huh? It made them feel kind and helpful and carefree and cheerful. Just one little letter, one little letter with some nice, loving words on it, changed their day. It made them do all these nice. Helpful things for others. That is so powerful, my friends. Words are very powerful. Kind and loving words are powerful. They spread love not just to the person that you write them for, but to everyone else that person meets next. Because love and kindness is a snowball effect. It keeps growing and growing. All it takes is one little letter and one person to start this chain of love. What a beautiful message. So, my friends, who would you write a love letter to? Yeah. And what I noticed was that when they felt loved, then they showed their love in a lot of different ways, right? Hedgehog was really cheerful to his family. Bunny was helpful. Even Squirrel, he was carefree, but he helped out his dad by scooping up the wood chips, and he also just helped out himself by not being so worried. My friends, how do you show love? If you feel really loved, how can you show it to others? Great ideas! I want you to keep those in your head because you can use them for this week's featured craft. Are you ready to check it out? Let's take a look. So this week's featured craft is love letter characters from our story, the love letter. If you notice, there's Hedgehog, here's Bunny. I also have a squirrel one here. Let me start with these two examples, though. And if you notice, one's already in color. So if you want to print it out in color, you can. Or there's black and white versions of all the animals where you can color it in yourself. 
And what you'll get to do is you'll get to pick a character that you want. You can be hedgehog, bunny, or squirrel. And then you get to pick a little envelope right here. This one says, dear friend. This one says, happy Valentine's Day. This one says, I show love when I. So how can you show love? That's what we were just talking about. And what's really cute is that these envelopes open up to reveal what is inside. So I would answer, I show love when I. And you can choose if you want to have a space to draw a picture and write some words. Other ones, other envelopes have different things on the inside. This one says, dear friend. And on the inside is of the letter that looks very similar to the one in our story except you get to fill in your own words to describe how you love your friend that you're writing to. And this envelope has some uh, just a space for a picture. Other envelopes you can choose to have ones with all lines to write something or other combinations or just blank so you can do whatever you want in the envelope. And then it just closes back up. It's got this part of the letter on top to keep it closed. So my friends, these are great little character crafts that you can use to share your love or kind words with a friend and someone you love. So go ahead and pick a character and fill out your little love envelope that they can open up to read all of your loving words. And I am so curious to see and to hear about once you share your words of love with someone else, how that makes them feel and what other actions of love and kindness that they will start sharing with others? What snowball effect can you create with your own love letter that you share? Imagine how powerful your one little letter can be to help spread love throughout the world. Okay, my friends, so if you're interested in doing this craft and want to find the templates to print them out and get started, please click on the link below, my storybook to my blog. You'll find all the directions there and the link to find the templates. There on the blog, you'll also find some reading resources, some main themes and ideas of our story, some vocabulary that we talked about in this story, as well as other reading resources and crafts from other My Storybook read-alouds. If you do do these crafts or go on your own reading adventures, I love hearing from all of you friends. So please reach out to me on Instagram, Facebook, here on YouTube, on the blog. All those social media links can be found down below. And please do remember, if you would love to book a one-on-one -on -one interactive read aloud video session with me where we will read a story and we'll talk about it in real person so we actually get to have a real reading conversation, please sign up for one of those sessions down below on Sunday. Up genius, and I cannot wait to go on a real reading adventure with all of you soon. If you do have a recommendation for a book you'd like to see on the list for read aloud video sessions, you can of course always write it in the comments below and I will be sure to add it in. But for now, my friends, if you want to continue seeing our reading adventures, please subscribe to my Storybook YouTube channel by clicking on that subscribe button to keep up with all of our reading adventures we will go on. But for now, our reading adventure has come to an end. I hope that this story encourages you to go and spread some love, whether it's through writing or through saying it out loud to someone. Know that your small action, your words can help cause a whole big chain reaction of love around the world. Well, I can't wait to see you for our next Read Aloud video or maybe even sooner if you sign up for a Read Aloud video session. But until then, my friends, happy reading!